In part one, I dismantled the Fridden EC1114, replacing some capacitors that were way off their specified value, and also a faulty neon lamp and reed switch. I'll put a link to that video down in the description. I'll now get the worst of the grubbiness cleaned off the exterior of the machine, and then we can look at the finished product. OK, that's as clean as it's going to be. I quite like the fact that on the left hand side of this calculator you can see where someone presumably left their pens, because it's covered in pen marks. It's just a nice reminder that this machine has probably seen many hours of work. Which isn't such a surprise, it would have been pretty expensive when it was new. Anyway, it's demo time. We have a 14 digit display with all those lovely Nixie tubes looking very three dimensional. If I add a 15th digit, the overflow light comes on on the left hand side of the display, and I can't do anything else until I clear the machine. Addition and subtraction are as you'd expect on an adding machine styled calculator, whereby you need to press the plus or minus key after each amount you want to add or subtract. For example, if I want to subtract 3 from 5, on a modern pocket calculator I'd enter 5, minus 3 and press equals to reveal the answer of 2. But on an adding machine, if I enter 5 minus 3 equals, and you'll notice that both the minus and plus keys have equals sign on them, we get the answer of minus 2, as indicated by the negative number indicator over on the right of the display. To correctly calculate 5 minus 3, we have to enter 5 plus, which enters a positive 5 into the register, followed by 3 minus, which effectively adds minus 3, leaving us with the correct total of 2. Decimals are fixed, but you can select from 0 to 9 decimal places using this rotary knob here. If I pop that back into 2 decimal places, we're ready to do financial calculations. So if I enter £11.99 and £10.19, we get the result of £22.18 in the display. If I now make that a bit bigger by adding £2,085, we get the answer of £2,023.03. To help identify the thousands, we can move this slider over to the left, which signifies the commas between the thousands. Multiplication is more or less as you'd expect on a pocket calculator. So if I enter 727 times 2 and press the plus equals key, we get the result of 1454. Then if I want to multiply that again, I just press times again, and then to 14 followed by plus equals, to get the answer of 20,356 showing on the display. Division is rather fun on this machine, because you actually get to see how fast, or slow, it does the calculation. So if I enter 5 trillion, 862 billion, 629 million, 460,156, divided by 936 million, 821,582. Now when I press the equals key, you'll see the display whiz as it works out the answer of 6258. And if I slow that down a bit, you'll get to see the action in a little more detail. Although I don't have a very high frame rate on this camera, so it won't be that great. But here goes. You can chain together multiplication and division. So if I enter 7 times 8 divided by 4 and press equals, we get the correct answer of 14. But you can't string together addition or subtraction with division or multiplication. For example, if I try 2 plus 3 times 4 and press equals, we get the answer of 12. Whereas normally we'd be looking for either 20, if we were actually trying to calculate 2 plus 3 with the result multiplied by 4, or 14 if we wanted to calculate 2 plus 3 times 4. To achieve that result we'd need to work out the 3 times 4 before adding the 2 to get the answer of 14. 
the rounding switch is pretty standard. If I set the machine to three decimal places and then enter 355 divided by 113 and press equals, we get the expected answer of 3.142. If I now turn the rounding off and do the same calculation, 355 divided by 113 and press equals, we get the answer of 3.141, because it's simply cut off after the third decimal rather than rounding up from 1 to 2, as the fourth decimal would have been 5. The K key latches down, allowing us to use a constant value for repeated multiplication or division. But rather unusually, for multiplication it uses the second figure entered as the constant value. So, if I want to convert from miles to kilometres, I'll enter 30 miles times 1.60934 and press equals to get the answer of 48.2802 kilometres. Then, to calculate further distances, I simply enter the distance in miles followed by the plus equals key. I'll go for 62 miles and press equals to get the result of 99.77908 kilometres. And finally 500 miles, giving us 804.67 kilometres, which doesn't quite have the same ring as walking 500 miles. Constant division works in exactly the same way, so we don't really need to go over that now. The R key allows us to reverse the display or X register and the hidden Y register, which is useful if, for instance, I want to calculate 2058 divided by 12 plus 7 plus 3 plus 18 plus 9. I first enter the 12 plus 7 plus 3 plus 18 plus 9, followed by divide and 2058. Then press the R key to swap the two registers, and finally press equals to reveal the answer of 42. The sigma key can be latched down to accumulate the results of multiplication or division calculations into the memory. So if I enter 251 times 5 and press plus equals, and 495 times 4 and press plus equals, and 576 times 2 and press plus equals, and finally 15 times 10 and press plus equals. I can now clear the display and press the subtotal or total key to reveal the answer of 4537. Using the subtotal key retains the number in the memory, whereas the total key displays the contents of the memory, clearing it in the process. You can, of course, add or subtract the contents of the display into or out of the memory at any time by using the memory plus and memory minus keys. The CE key clears the current display, but not the entire calculation you're working on. And lastly, before we take a closer look at the Nixie tubes, the big question. What happens if I divide by zero? Will it explode? And so on. So, I'll enter one divided by zero and press equals. And it gets a bit confused, displaying multiple digits and counting up. I think I'll stop that there by pressing the clear key. So it must have been about this time, or not long after, that calculator manufacturers started building in a trap to stop a never-ending loop from occurring when you accidentally divide by zero. Oh yeah, and while I think about it, some of you will wonder what the Singer badge is on the front of the calculator. Well, Singer, and that's the same company that makes the sewing machines, took over Fridden in the early 60s. So this calculator, which was made by Hitachi, is badged both as a Singer and a Fridden. And now, for the benefit of anyone who hasn't seen the previous video showing the Munro 620 Nixie Tube calculator, here's a close-up of those beautiful Nixie Tubes. You can see, as I cycle through the numbers, how each digit is stacked in front of the next, with the number 6 at the front of the stack and 0 at the back. And again, shot from a different angle, allowing you to see the mesh at the front which forms the anode, and the ten digits behind that form the cathodes. I explain this in a little more detail in a previous video, link in the description. And maybe one more angle for good luck, so you really get the impression of how three-dimensional these Nixie Tube displays are.
Anyway, I think that will do for this video. If you've enjoyed watching, please like the video and maybe even subscribe to the channel, not forgetting to click on the bell icon so you get notifications when future videos are released. That's it for now, so thanks for watching, and I'll see you in a future video.